probe reveals or ultra orthodox Jewish schools are exploiting special funding. This goes deep. Okay. In New York, the United States of America, a new investigation released by the New York Times revealed that Hasidic and Orthodox schools, Orthodox Jewish schools in New York City are using funds intended for special education for other purposes. The report referred to a 2014 New York City government policy created under a former bill, Mayor Bill de Blasio, which was, made it easier for private school students to receive state-funded special education. But as the Times reported, the policy led to, quote, a windfall of government money for services that were sometimes not needed or even provided. The New York Times also reported that dozens of Hasidic and Orthodox Jewish schools, also known as yeshivas, have urged parents to have their child diagnosed with disabilities. Two yeshivas sent mass emails to parents encouraging families to apply for funding. Another school reportedly gave out sample prescriptions to parents, which they could then give to their children's doctors, allowing them to be diagnosed and receive more government resources for the yeshiva. Unsurprisingly, many Hasidic Jews attacked the New York Times and mounted a media campaign against them, accusing the media of outlet of bigotry and threatening the lives of Hasidic Jews. However, many advocates for yeshiva school reforms welcomed the investigation, saying that they are necessary to force these schools to change. So there is a lot to unpack here. That was the summary. Let me give a little bit more background explainer. So the New York, the state of New York has a policy where if your child is in private school or in public school and they need special accommodations because of a disability or special need that they have, the government will basically, this is a very simplified version of this, right? This is Susanna's understanding of these broad government policies. Basically, the government will subsidize your the parents going to an outside provider to get the services that the state could not give to the child because according to federal law the state has a mandate to provide the disability services that children need if the state cannot do that through public means basically this policy is like mandating that they subsidize parents going to outside providers to do this and so in 2014, this system was like so overburdened with requests and they weren't coming through fast enough that Mayor Bill de Blasio at the time basically sped up the whole process. And when this happened, it ushered in a huge change to the system. And this New York Times investigation, the New York Times last year also did a very deep investigation into how Basically, children in yesh yeshivas are not receiving adequate education. They're failing at insanely disproportionate rates. Um, they also investigated how these schools, many of them, not all, have a system, according to their reporting, of working around this system to get as much money as possible out of the system and back into the yeshiva. And so to the point that, um, okay, here's a quote from a summary of it. The newspaper also reported that of the 18,000 applications for special ed services filed by the families last year, more than half came from districts with a large Hasidic and Orthodox communities. But however, so if, if more than half of these requests are coming from boroughs that have a disproportionately high population of these particular communities, right? But there is no research indicating that these communities, disabilities occur more frequently within these communities on average, right? We have no empirical data to support that. And not only that, but there is a system in which a part of the problem is that one of the reasons why a lot of these children were being referred to special education things is because they are failing English um, testing. But they're failing English testing because as previous reporting has exposed, the yeshivas are not giving these children any secular education and actually many of them barely even teach the ch children English. 
So of course, when a qualification for special education credits is, you know, not being up to par with your peers in terms of English speaking, when you're not being taught English in the school setting, then you suddenly qualify for this. Now, another thing that's happening, according to the New York Times, I read the full report, is that there's this relationship happening where since this ha this change in policy in 2014, there has been ex an explosion in the industry of these special services companies. And the special services com companies often are created by people who do not have a proper background in education in special education for children. And they're sometimes coming from people who basically are come out of degree mills that work within the Hasidic community. And then the third thing is that these companies that offer the special education to students often make large donations to the yeshivas so that then they get referrals. And on top of that, the yeshivas, the, excuse me, the many of the services that are supposed to be offering the special ed to these students are charging much more than the government comparison of those services. And not only are the services charging the government more on average per hour, but then they're paying the person, the teacher to the students, less than a comparable peer offering the same service. So there's like the service provider and then like the teacher. So the teacher is being paid less on average, but the service is being is charging the government more on average. And oh my God, there's just like so much more that um, we could get into. And then in response to this, there well, Armin, before I well, go into we, the community's yeah. reaction, like just okay. give me your reaction to all this. No, I don't. No, we I shouldn't because we we need to move on because we're gonna. I'm just going to let you give your reaction because I, I do want to say a lot. Of, I just want to add that, guys, like, look, we are going after um, Jewish nonsense as well okay? because we get accused a lot um, about not covering, you know, um, Jew, Jewish mumbo jumbo here. But we do every time, every time we see it, we do. In fact, we have two Jewish related news today, which is odd. Um, but I just want to add that. I just want to take credit for that fact that we do cover a Jew, Judaism as well. Um, but, but yeah, but we need to move because we have so much more juicy news coming and we need to move on to the next ones. Yeah. Well, I just want to say one more thing. So, what people need to understand is that. This is something that, I mean, there was a very big reaction to this and the ultra-Orthodox, Haredim, Hasidic, whatever you want to call it, community has given a strong reaction and they did a media campaign basically showing that the New York Times has done this many stories talking about our community. And at the same time, we've had this huge explosion in anti-Semitic attacks that have happened. And that is genuinely big problem in the united states year over year the people who get hate crime to the most are jews it's just a fact yes yes it, it's just a fact and it needs to be addressed in our country and like no one wants to properly address it however organizations and people investigating the fact that these children are being purposefully like cut off at the knees for lack of a better term like restricted from birth to be stuck within this community that doesn't give them a proper secular education, barely teaches them English. So they are, they're essentially chained into these extremely insular communities. It's, and they're the most strict, you know, the most traditional, they're not representative of most Jews in America by far. Um, it's having a concern for those children and having them being raised in an extremely, extremely high control environment like is of concern to everyone that is of concern to the state. What if, if this was happening in any community, right? And so it frustrates me there. I mean, when there were policies trying to be put forth to reform these schools, there were parents outside saying, I would rather holding signs saying, I would rather go to jail than cha change my child's education. So it's, they're very hardcore about this. And 
having a concern just saying like these children should be afforded the same opportunities as any other community and as a state we're actually mandated by law to ensure that that happens that's not bigotry towards a group and there are there's an amazing okay, organization I, okay, just go, okay yes this is my last point there's an amazing organization called yafed spelled y-a-f-f-e-d and they are an organization of people who escaped the ultra orthodox community and they are pushing and there's also another one called footsteps and they are pushing to help people who want to have a life outside of this community and pushing to ensure that these children are granted the education that they have a right to as american citizens and these are people who are you know this is this is their community this is what matters to them and to say that like these people are like somehow anti-Semitic, that, that, that is ridiculous. And so I want to highlight their work because I want more people to support their work because it's really important to me. Okay, two things I want to mention really quickly. One is that um, the 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 people who are accusing others of anti-Semitic, they are they're hurting Jewish kids. Okay, the the people who are raising like awareness about how abusive these people these orthodox jewish people are being to their own community that is not that's the opposite of anti-semitic okay there's a concern that these people have for how much these orthodox communities are hurting jewish kids this is like this is um in their favor but also how i don't know evil do you have to be to use the actual racism against Jewish people as a way to shield yourself from criticism, you know, you're abusing, you're taking the hurting of your community and instead of trying to reduce it, you're weaponizing it to shield yourself from criticism. I've seen this being done by Christians, you know, like um, I've seen this being done by especially, um, you know, the Muslim community, you know, they call it Islamophobia every time you do that. I see that now Hindus have learned this. A lot of Hindus have been learning that from Muslims. They even have a Hindu phobia term for it, for it now. They throw that around. But now this is like, but it's, I don't know why, but I find it very disgusting when, it, when it's being used like this um, by Jewish communities because the hurt was so much more significant, right? Like they're even using... The hollow, you know what, you, such a major crime in history to use that in your favor to protect yourself, especially when you're making financial gains, especially when people are trying to figure out how to lift up the kids from your community, right? And you use those major crimes in history as a way to be like throw that in people's faces to shut people up. It's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. Anyways. It would be anti-Semitic to deny these children the rights that are afforded to them as American citizens. Yes. Yes. Period. Exactly. Yeah. Good point. Um, right. These kids are American, goddammit! <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. I have to have my, you know, Amrika <laughs> moment every now and then. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.